We will now hear uh, from our next early career investigator, Dr. Isabel Malhame, Assistant Professor at McGill University Obstetric Medicine and General Internal Medicine at McGill University Health Center and FRQS Junior One Scientist at the Research Institute of the McGill University Health Center. Dr. Malhame was selected by Zulfikar Bhutta for her research on reducing severe maternal morbidity across the pregnancy continuum. Delighted to hand it over now to Malhame. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to present our work and future progress on research to reduce severe maternal morbidity. And particularly, thank you to Dr. Zulfikar Bhutta, who has dedicated his entire career to improving the health and well-being of children and mothers globally, and who has made sure through his advocacy and incredible legacy that, that evidence-based medicine did not leave them behind. I would also like to acknowledge the land that I, to acknowledge the fact that the land uh, where I conduct my work, Jochage, is the traditional territory uh, of the Genyenke Haga, a place which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange among nations and that continues to carry this tradition of cultural mixity forward. I have no conflicts of interest. Severe maternal morbidity is a set of unexpected outcomes related to pregnancy, labor, childbirth, and the postpartum period, resulting in severe illness, prolonged hospitalization, or long-term disability. Severe maternal morbidity is on the pathway to maternal mortality. And as a result, for every woman who dies during or after pregnancy in high-income settings, about 85 of them experience a severe maternal morbidity event. The World Health Organization has thus recommended a focus on maternal morbidity to monitor and improve the quality of obstetric care. Unfortunately, in Canada, the incidence of severe maternal morbidity has been on the rise. While certain types of severe maternal morbidity events, such as serious infections or postpartum hemorrhage or surgical complications have been improving, on the contrary, other medical complications, such as assisted ventilation for respiratory distress, acute renal failure or uh, stroke have been increasing. And this may be explained by transitions in the obstetric population, which now inc includes uh, women who are at higher risk of complications during pregnancy and postpartum. Women are getting pregnant at an older age. The prevalence of obesity has been on the rise. Women are developing more hypertensive disorders before, during, and after pregnancy, and more metabolic complications such as diabetes. As a result, we're now seeing a paradigm shift in causes of maternal mortality in high-income settings, which now comprise cardiovascular disease and other medical disorders. So how do we, going forward, reduce this deterioration of health from morbidity to severe maternal morbidity and prevent this escalation of care? And this is the research question that my program has been trying to address along three major axes, the first being risk prediction to identify individuals at high risk before they develop adverse complications. But first, before prediction, it is important to define the outcome that we're interested in predicted. And we put forth the concept of cardiovascular severe maternal morbidity, a composite outcome regrouping cardiovascular indicators of morbidity such as acute myocardial infarction, pulmonary edema, and stroke. And we've operationalized that definition into an algorithm of diagnostic codes that can be used in administrative data sets to, uh, pr to do more research on that topic moving forward. And we then characterized this outcome of interest and looked at a broad, large population sample and saw that temporal trends over the past years were revealing that cardiovascular severe maternal morbidity was in fact increasing and that most maternal cardiovascular deaths were in fact occurring in women who were not known for cardiovascular disease prior to pregnancy. We were then interested in predicting cardiovascular adverse events in the large population sample uh, that comprises the general obstetric population and not just women who are known for cardiovascular disease. We developed two risk prediction models, one to, pre to predict adverse events occurring at delivery and another one to predict adverse cardiovascular events occurring postpartum. And both risk prediction models performed extremely well uh, with good accuracy and good internal validity. 
What also came uh, to be apparent was that preeclampsia and severe preeclampsia were among the strongest markers uh, and the strongest predictors of cardiovascular severe maternal morbidity. So we were interested in developing a risk prediction tool specifically for this subset of the pregnant population. And while clinical risk factors alone uh, allowed us to uh, have a prediction model that had a reasonably good accuracy, we are now interested in future years uh, in, in implementing risk prediction tools that incorporate biomarkers, including echocardiographic and circulating biomarkers, to predict cardiovascular morbidity in pregnant women with preeclampsia. The second axis of my research program centers around the management of high-risk condition to uh, help develop better early diagnosis and more tailored therapies to women at, with conditions at risk of adverse events. B-type natriuretic peptides have long been used in the non-pregnant setting to diagnose heart failure, but we were interested in assessing whether this diagnostic tool could be used in the pregnant population and found that, in fact, it was uh, quite sensitive and specific and helped us greatly to make the diagnosis of heart failure in the pregnant population. And women with heart failure in pregnancy represent a heterogeneous group of patients. Women with peripartum cardiomyopathy, a pregnancy-specific type of heart failure, who also develop uh, preeclampsia, are actually at higher risk of adverse events, including pulmonary edema and thromboembolic complication, and as such, may require a more uh, tailored therapy. And finally, to make sure that pregnant and postpartum women have the best therapies available to them, it is important to advocate for their inclusion and their, participate, their participation in clinical trials. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, we highlighted that clinicians who look after pregnant women with COVID-19 would actually be strongly in favor of including them in clinical trials of intervention for COVID-19. And we hope that this advocacy can also be translated in other non-obstetrical conditions. And in the next future years, I will focus on atrial fibrillation in pregnancy, which is a type of arrhythmia that can be associated with severe morbidity and mortality that is poorly understood. Now, the third axis of my research fo program focuses on quality improvement and patient safety. And so in order to reduce severe maternal morbidity events, it is important to learn from one another and decrease uh, the adverse events that occur. And to do so, we are interested in developing an infrastructure to review in a synergistic and centralized manner severe maternal morbidity events across the country. An obstetric survey system is a nationwide, centralized, anonymized case reporting system for severe maternal morbidity events. An, ob an obstetric survey system would be particularly well suited to the Canadian context, as it allows us to engage with maternity units within communities, to respect regional specificities and priorities, to conduct an in-depth appraisal of individual severe maternal morbidity events, including a holistic assessment of clinical and social determinants of health. Our team is currently in the process of mapping out maternity units across the country and identifying local severe maternal morbidity review systems in place. We have so far contacted 230 maternity units and we're uh, collecting answers to our survey. And we uh, so far have found that the majority of respondents do have a severe maternal morbidity sy uh, review system in place that could be leveraged in a, an obstetric survey system as they would be willing to share anonymized data about adverse events occurring in their unit. So in future years, we will be working to develop and implement a Canadian obstetric survey system called CANOS to reduce severe maternal morbidity moving forward. In conclusion, to reduce severe maternal morbidity, it is important to refine and validate risk prediction tools, to generate the evidence base to manage high-risk conditions, and to develop the infrastructure to learn from one another and reduce adverse events. And with that, I would like to acknowledge the broad network of collaborators and co-investigators who have participated in the work and the results that I've presented, as well as the supporting organizations and the funders that have supported our work. I would also like to thank my mentors, including my senior mentors and peer mentors, who have made this early career journey that much more richer and enjoyable. Congratulations to all the Garner laureates. You are an inspiration to us all.